BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. All right, we're back. What's happening? UFC 305 this weekend. The card we've been waiting for. I'm not going to lie. That last UFC card, Tybura Spivak. It was pretty brutal. The card itself was brutal. Literally nobody cared for this UFC. So it's hard for me to care when nobody else cares, right? The views are down. Nobody even messaged me to... It was just no one really gave a shit about this card. Um, even the hardcores that watch every UFC, they didn't even care for that last uh, Tybura Spivak. And that is an issue. They need to put at least one good main event fight on there. And then everybody will start tuning in, right? But they're stacking the Abu Dhabi cards and these Apex ones. They're just giving away, just to fill the ESPN deal, right? Just to make sure they're covering their butt with that ESPN deal. But, yeah, it was hard for me. I didn't even bet the card, and I bet very uh, <clears throat> often on these UFC cards. I didn't even bet that last card. It was just so brutal. I wasn't even feeling it. So that shows you... Um, that last card, I think we lost on two picks. I believe Spivak and uh, what was the other one we lost on? Um, Damon Jackson, that was the two we lost on. I think we hit on all the other ones. Um, but yeah, this one, everyone cares about this card, right? Izzy Adesanya, Drikus Duplessis. The middleweight title is on the line now. Should Israel even be getting a title shot? Probably not, right? He's lost two of his last three fights. But clearly, he's got the biggest name in the division, and the UFC wants this guy to win, right? Because he brings in big numbers, and he's got a huge following, and he's very, very marketable, speaks well. He's the guy the UFC wants. Why? Let me tell you this right now. So the UFC is purposely scheduled on Kalaev to fight Rakic. And a lot of people have been giving the UFC some shit for that because on has got a nice little win streak going. I believe it's seven or eight fights in a row. He's been killing it at 205. Clearly deserves the title shot. Clearly won't get it because, um, or he probably will eventually, but you can tell they don't want to give him the title shot because they know he's a bad matchup for Alex Poetan, right? Because Poetan likes to strike and his grappling isn't very good. And on Kalaev's wrestling and grappling is, it's phenomenal. His wrestling is very, very good. And, you know, he's probably going to take Pereira down. So the UFC wants who to fight for the title at 205. They want Israel Adesanya. Well, they can't put him up against Pereira with coming off a loss to Strickland. But if he goes back and gets the middleweight title fight, then he goes up and fights Pereira. Champ, champ, now we're talking. That's going to be huge pay-per-view. That's a huge card, right? Champ versus champ. Very doesn't happen often. And that's exactly what the UFC is hoping for. And the UFC tends to get what they want. And I think Israel Adesanya here is going to get the victory against Drakus Duplessis. Let's like the style. I just every time I watch I watch a lot of tape on Drakus and he's not the te most technical striker. He's a little sloppy on the feet, but he's very effective and he's got a great gas tank and he's able to push a pace and now he's able to breathe out of his nose so he doesn't have his, you know, mouth open all the time after that surgery. But I just feel if this fight stays on the feet, which it probably will, Israel Adesanya is the better striker of the two. He's, you know, more accomplished in the kickboxing department, right? Professional kickboxer, like 80, 70, 80 pro fights. And even in the MMA, he's he's a little more experienced, not by much, but in, in those big championship fights, right? This is Drikus' first title defense. Israel's had a few already. So the experience, you know, dealing with the nerves, you know, I believe I got to go with Israel Adesanya. Very close bet. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to post my bet. I posted my bet actually in the corner here. I got a parlay with Gamrot and Izzy. Nice little uh, over double up. So it's like plus 150 those odds if you parlay them together, which is you know pretty sweet. But I just have a feeling Israel Adesanya is a little too technical on the feet. I think he's extremely hungry. He definitely hates Strickus Duplessis, clearly. Um, watching the countdown, you see, you know, he, he manifested, you know, Drickus winning against Whitaker and he him fighting Drickus down the road. You can tell looking at Israel training, he's in very good shape. He looked like he packed on some muscle too. He's looking a little juicy to say the least. Um, I have a feeling Drickus is going to be, have a hard time with Israel Adesanya in the striking department. Now, that being said, Drickus Duplessis can take people down, and he's a big middleweight. But Israel Adesanya is no slouch to people trying to take him down. I mean, you know, clearly he did very good against Marvin Vittori, who's sort of like a, like a Drickus, where he's got that heavy wrestling style, but he's also a very aggressive striker as well, likes to push a pace. And Israel did very good against him twice, right? You know, beat Derek Brunson, who's a very strong wrestler himself. You know, Will Robert Whitaker. I know he didn't really try to strike, uh, try to grapple too much, but he he had a few exchanges there. Um, Kelvin Gastelum. So he has fought some good wrestlers. Israel Adesanya is no slouch on the ground either. So he's got a purple belt, I believe, under Andre Galvao. So his jiu-jitsu is not bad, and I just have a feeling this fight is going to be a striking match because Strickus does like the strike. You know, he has a lot of success against guys like Robert Whitaker, you know, Sean Strickland, who are all high-level strikers, and Drickus dealt with those guys, man. Um, if you see here, significant strikes landed per minute, 6.49. That is very high for a middleweight. That is extremely high. So he pushes a pace on guys, and guys seem to melt. 50% takedown accuracy, that's very high as well. The guy is good, man. I'm not going to lie. Drickus Duplessis is good. I just have a feeling this fight is going to stay on the feet, and if you're going to be striking with Israel Adesanya, as long as the Sean Strickland Izzy doesn't show up, the one that fought Sean Strickland, I think Izzy is going to do just great on the feet. And uh, I think he's going to pick Drickus apart for, I don't know if he's going to get the knockout, but I think I'm going to go with Israel. I think he might win a decision here. And even if it's a close fight, let's say it's a very close fight, they're going to want Izzy to win. In Australia as well, everything's leaning uh, towards Izzy. I just have a feeling he's going to be able to get it done, but he did not look good his last fight, but hopefully... Yeah, it doesn't you know? Sometimes you have off nights, so no shame in uh, that night. Up next, Kai Car France taking on Steve Urseg. So Steve Urseg, another big fight for him. You know, coming off a title fight to Pantoja, he came into the UFC and only had you know three fights in the UFC before he got his title shot against Pantoja, and even his fight against Pantoja. He did great, man. I mean, his striking was looking crisp. That jab is beautiful. Obviously, he had a very difficult time with the grappling of Pantoja, right? Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, very high-level grappler. Um, but going into this fight, he he's not fighting a guy who likes to grapple. He was fighting Kai Car France. Kai Car France likes to stand and bang, right? He's a great striker himself, and he has not been looking good, so... He's coming off two straight losses. So he lost to Brandon Moreno, which is no shame losing to Brandon Moreno, but it was the way he lost to Brandon Moreno. He got stopped with a liver kick, kick to the body, and then his last fight, he lost a split decision to Almir Albazi. All right. Um, you know, close fight, split decision. I have a feeling he's going to try to stand and strike with Steve Urseg, and I think Steve Urseg is the better, more technical striker out of the two. And he's just long, man. He's 5'8 compared to 5'4. He's long, lanky. I know it says the reach here is uh, Kai Car France got the reach advantage, but um, that goes by wingspan, and it's not your hands out. At it. It's weird how they measure that, so it's like it's weird how they're measuring because some people have a wide chest, so are they adding that into the wingspan? It's weird how they measure the reach. Uh, it's not too accurate, but uh, it is what it is. But I think Steve Urseg 
should be able to get the job done here. I do think this one goes to decision. But Kai Car France is much more experienced. And maybe if he, you know, turns this into a grappling match, um, he might be able to win. But Steve Ursaig even might be able to better be the better grappler of the two. Kai Car France, less than one takedown average, you know, so not a guy who likes to go for takedowns. But I'll go with Steve Ursaig on that one. And this is my boy here, Mateus Gamrot, taking on Dan the Hangman Hooker. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, I love me some Gamrot. I've been betting on Gamrot since his first fight in the UFC. I, I told I've been high up on Gamrot for a long, long time. Ever since I seen him in ADCC, I believe it was ADCC 2019. Uh, I'm like, man, this guy's grappling is very good. And he's, dude, who do you know out grapples Armin Sarukian? Like, other than Islam. Mateus Gamrot did that, man. He, he When he, like, I've been just t riding this Gamrot guy. Like, he's been killing it for me, man. I know he had that one um, bad performance against Benil Dariush. I just think that was a bad performance, man. I think he just, you know, had an off night against Benil Dariush. And Benil Dariush clearly beat him. That was the only fight of Gamrot that I thought um, he clearly lost, right? Because that he has two losses on his record. One was to Gurum Kutsaladze, Hamzat's training partner. I thought Gamrot won that fight. I'll be real with you. I thought he won the fight. And so if I take that out, his only loss was to two years ago against Benil Dariush. And, you know, ever since then, he, he's been looking really good, man. He beat Jalen Turner, beat Fazeev, and that was a leg injury. And then he completely dominated Rafael Dos Anjos, out grappling Rafael Dos Anjos. And, you know, probably the biggest win of his career is over Armin Sarukian, who's next in line for a title shot, man. So... If he beats Dan Hooker, which I think he will, clearly a big favorite. I have to think Dan Hooker's going to have a very difficult time with the grappling of Gamrot. Extremely difficult. And I think Gamrot should submit him, in my opinion. Like, it, it, Islam Makachev completely destroyed Dan Hooker, subbed him in the first round. Um, I think uh, it, Gamrot's just going to outgrapple this guy. So I'll go Gamrot all day. Up next, Tai Tuivasa taking on Jarzinho Rosenstruck. Now, man, I'll, I'll be real with you. This one could go either way. It's definitely ending in a knockout. Either guy could get knocked out. But I'm just leaning towards Tai because I'm a big Tai Tuivasa fan, and it's in Australia, in his backyard. The guy's going to get up on the fucking cage and get the shoey ready. Like it, It's going to be beautiful if he gets this win. This is going to be amazing. And he's got a hard test because Jarzina Rona strike is a high level striker. You know, he's a guy who came over from professional kickboxing. And he one punches guys. He's got heavy hands, right? Um, he's got some big wins over himself, you know. Beat uh, Junior Dos Santos, beat Alistair Overeem in that fifth round. Beat Andre Orlovsky, you know, knocked out Chris Dawkins. He's got some pretty decent wins. Um,. But his style does play in, they play into each other because Tai Tuivasa is a guy who likes to go out there, stand and exchange bombs. And that's exactly what Rosenstrike likes to do as well, right? And if you see Tai Tuivasa's last two losses against Volkov, he got Ezekiel choked, right? And then Tybura, rear naked choke. Both those guys took that fight to the ground and used their jujitsu on Tai. Jarzina Rosenstrike has zero jujitsu. He's a guy who's going to go out there and stand and bang. So I'm going with the underdog on this one. I'm going with Tai Tuivasa. A little biased. I'll tell you, be real with you. I'm a little biased because I'm a big Tai Tuivasa fan. I just wanted to see him get the KO, jump on the cage, drink a nice shoey. It's just the crowd's going to go nuts in Australia. Absolutely nuts. So I go with Tai. He's my boy. So I got to go with Tai on this one, I think. And it's going to be a great stylistic matchup. Both guys like to stand and bang. So it's going to be fireworks, absolute fireworks. That that might be fight of the night up there. Li Jingliang, the leech, taking on Carlos Pratis. Pratis, Freights, I don't know how to pronounce it, whatever. Um, so Li Jingliang, you know, two and two in his last four. He And they're 
decent, right? So he had that obviously horrible performance against Hamza. No shame moving to Hamza Chimaev. And then his last fight, it was a split decision loss to Daniel Rodriguez. But before that, he finished Muslim Salikov, and he also finished Santiago Ponsonibio. Inc- very impressive. Um, taking on Carlos Prat, who's his, Pratiz, who's on a huge, huge, um, nice little win streak here. Yeah, nice, huge win streak. Um, I believe he's got nine wins in a row. Seven or st- yeah, seven or nine, if you include the kickboxing. Now that being said, he's only had two fights in the UFC, one fight on the Contender series, and you know now he's stepping up in competition, fighting the Leech. Clearly, though, he's a big favorite, so um, I'm leaning towards Carlos on this one. The Leech seems to be hitting the downhill. But this one could go either way. Um, they're counting out the leech because the leech is for real. And he's got the experience edge too, especially in these high-profile you know, big UFC fights, right? Le- Le- leech has been around. He's fought who's the who's who. And this Carlos guy has not. So, obviously, Carlos should win minus 300. Clearly, he's a huge favorite. I don't agree with the odds. I don't believe he should be minus 300. But uh, maybe minus two at the max. But I think Carlos probably should get it done. And I'm thinking by decision. Because the leech is hard to knock out. The leech is very hard to knock out and to submit. He's He's got pretty good defense. Um, so I'll go with uh, Carlos on that one. This one's interesting. This one's another. Uh, could go either way. Um, Junior Tafa taking on Valter Walker. Junior Taffa, brother of Justin Taffa, the Taffa bros. These guys like to stand and bang, and he's got heavy hands. Um, I don't believe he hits as hard as his brother, but he's he, he does hit hard, and he's fighting Valter Walker. I believe this is... Is this Johnny Walker's brother? I'm not too sure, uh, to be honest. Sort of looks like I'm... I believe it might be, actually. Either way... This one could literally go either way. Um, I'm going to go with Junior Tafa on this one, but um, this one could literally go either way. This is I hate betting heavyweights, by the way, but this is a toss It could either go either way. This one's interesting. Josh Kuliabau taking on Ricardo Hamos. Josh Kuliabau um, coming off two straight losses. One of those was a split decision. So, you know, he's a guy who really needs to get back on the win streak because if he loses this one, again, almost, that's three losses in a row. And he's fighting, you know, the guy who's very good at spinning elbows. Ricardo Hamos got some nice spinning elbows. And the thing with Hamos, he has not been looking good lately because his last two fights, even though he lost, like same, Josh lost his last two as well, but they weren't as bad as Ricardo Hamos. Like, Ricardo Hamos got guillotine choked in his last two fights, and he's supposed to be the jiu-jitsu black belt high-level guy, which he is. He's, he's very high-level. But he really hasn't been looking good lately. That's the reason I'm leaning towards Kuliabau on this one, just because of how bad Ricardo Hamos has been looking his last few fights. Um, hopefully he works on that guillotine defense because... That's three guillotine loss. If Kuliabau gets a guillotine, that's three guillotines in a row. So you, you don't want to have that happen. They're, you're going to get kicked out of the UFC. Um, yeah, so I'll go with Josh Kuliabau. Jack Jenkins minus 800 against Gilbert Burns' brother. Geez, so you already know who's probably going to win that one. Uh, Jack will go with, and the other guy, Tom Nolan, he's the biggest favorite on the cards, right? Hometown guy. They're looking to build this guy in his backyard, so that's an easy one there, but minus 1150, horrible odds. And the last one is Song Kanan taking on Ricky Glenn here. Um, I'll go with Song Kanan, but uh, not really impressed with uh, either of these guys to be honest with you they're just these are just fillers right you got some space fill them with just these guys right here but this main card is great man tight from starting from Ty to Gamera to Steve Ursig and for Kaikara and then you know the main event is going to be 
really good, man. It's very heated as well. Wait till the press conference. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be good, man. I can't wait. And if you guys need a place to bet, bet US promo code Iceman. I am betting on this card. I didn't bet last go, last card, but I'm betting on this one. So let's do it. Let's try to make that money. Out. Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins.